the uh, first seminar of the year. So, uh, as you mentioned, my name is Gary, and I own Quick Monster. Uh, after a couple days here, we'll hit our 12th year in business. Uh, we originally started off as a company called Walking Web, and we rebranded a few years ago. And I'm going to rip through this PowerPoint because it's boring. And uh, I much would prefer to show you live examples and actually pull up search engines and look at websites and kind of see what uh, what people are doing and how it works and uh, uh, kind of go from there. Uh, the topics today I think we're going to cover are digital marketing, which is pretty much all encompassing, but more specifically I want to talk about social media marketing, Facebook advertising, which probably falls under social media marketing, search engine optimization, local search engine optimization, which is very similar, but uh, when you're when you have a brick and mortar location or you're trying to target more prospects or clients that are in your backyard, then there's some different strategies you want to uh, consider when you're doing that. Um, Google AdWords or pay-per-click. We primarily use Google AdWords. There are other pay-per-click engines. Bing has one. Uh, I'll tell you why we don't like to use Bing or other ones when we stick with Google. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about reputation management, how that affects your business and your performance online. Um, Am I missing anything, Natalie? Oh, sorry. Yeah, she's not paying attention. Natalie is a monster. Just making sure she's paying attention back there, so keep her on her toes. Uh, and probably a couple other things that we'll uh, we'll chat about as we go. And then we'll have a lot of time to go to a little bit, uh, to be interactive and, and look at some some local websites and kind of see uh, some things that you can do to to perform better. So. That's kind of the history. Uh, I've been doing it for 12 years. We were originally Watkin Web. Uh, as we grew uh, and started getting clients outside the area, I got sick of people hearing uh, hearing people say Watcom. Like, What's your Watcom? Is it like dot com? No, it's the county, and this got confusing. So, so we rebranded and became ClickMonster. Uh, we we serve clients in about 40 states and a few different countries right now. So it's been a it's been a fun ride so far. Um, so I touched a little bit on text digital marketing, organic SEO, local SEO, PPC, social media marketing, reputation management. I have Google Analytics on there. It's not a type of SEO, but it's definitely something every website should have uh, because it helps you measure your results. Uh, and it's free. Um, so this slide doesn't look that great, but this is a this is an example of a search for a Bellingham SEO company. I'll show you this live search later, but. Um, it's a little choppy the way it looks, but as you can see on the results on the top, you see does that have a pointer on it? Uh, yeah, no, it doesn't have a pointer. Okay. All right. Well, um, well, you can see PPC. So just raise your hand if you know what PPC or Google AdWords is. Okay. Uh, PPC stands for pay it per click. So every time someone clicks one of those ads. Um, it costs the advertiser money, and it can vary. Uh, I've seen cost per click on ads up to $100, and I've seen as little as 20 or 30 cents. Uh, it really depends on your industry. Uh, the $100, $100 ad click was an asbestos lawyer in New York, and that's big money, so they are willing to spend a lot of money for that those clicks. Um, uh, click Monster, I mean, we can spend an average of 8 or $9 on a click for web design searches and SEO searches. Um, my background is banking and finance, so I always tell people it doesn't matter how much you spend unless you get, as long as you're getting a positive return on investment. So we have clients that spend three or four hundred dollars a month, and we have clients that spend thirty or forty thousand dollars a month. Uh, spend a hundred thousand dollars a month as long as you get a positive ROI. It really doesn't matter. The cost doesn't matter. It just matters that you understand how the system works and that it, it benefits uh, whatever goals you're trying to achieve. Uh, the second is the. Uh, Local listing, uh, in our world we call it, the, in Google we call it the map pack. Uh, that has changed a lot over the years, as well as all the Google search results, but the map, map pack used to be seven businesses, and now it's three. So it's a lot harder to get into the map pack, but if you're a local business with a physical location, you want to be in the map pack, because that's where you're going to get a ton of traffic from. People are going to go there first, uh, they display your reviews, so you want to have reviews. Uh, and then lastly, is what I call the straight organic results, which is below the map pack, uh, but not classified as a local listing. And so you can see uh, for that particular search, when I did it, uh, Quick Monster was down there below uh, uh, Danny and Ethan. Um, so, uh, yeah, 
So periodically I go in and I just search for myself and I just put my competitors out. Uh, <laughs> brings a little joy to my heart during the day. So, uh, but, uh, but, but, but uh, you know, you can't. <laughs> I was joking about that, but that, but really I do do it. But, uh, uh, but Google's smart, so they know I can't repeatedly click that ad over and over again because Google understands the, that it's coming from the same IP address and they uh, will basically invalidate the click. So if you're a pay-per-click advertiser, you don't have to worry about people. Uh, clicking your ad a million times with competitors and, and driving into the cost, it, it just can't happen. They, they can get you every couple of days for sure, though. Uh, and then, you know, maybe they get you from home or maybe they get from the office or from their phone at Starbucks. But, but generally, it's, uh, you know, people get bored of it pretty quick. So uh, that's, a, that's an example. We'll, we'll do a live example of that a little later. Um, so, what is search engine optimization? Raise your hand if you think you have an idea what it is before you read the slide. Yeah? All right. So, basically, it's just optimizing and tuning up your online presence so that Google and other search engines uh, treat your website more favorably in search, i.e. they're going to rank you higher for your targeted search terms. Um, very valuable. I use a pretty crappy analogy that's like having the biggest ad in the yellow pages. Uh, who still advertises in the yellow pages right here? Ooh, all right. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, uh, it's a it's definitely it's an art and a science to SEO. You know, I've been doing it for probably working on twenty years. Uh, it's changed a ton. Uh, back in the early days you could just put keywords in your code and people would put sexually explicit keywords or keywords related to money if they were an accountant. Because those because the goal there was just to get as much traffic to your website as, as you could. Not really understanding that if someone's searching for some of those search terms and they land on your your uh, accounting piece your CPA webpage that they're not going to stick around and hire you because you showed up for a search term that you uh, uh, manipulated yourself into writing for. Uh, obviously, over the years, it's become a lot more sophisticated and it's a lot more challenging and time consuming to get a website to rank for any particular search term. And depending on the industry that you're in, it can be very competitive. Um, but there's lots of Lots of great ways to get more traffic to your website, uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about how to do that. So, so we'll, we'll look at some SEO elements of websites and, and talk about that as well. Pay-per-click, we talked about that. Uh, Pay-per-click is pretty awesome because you can define exactly what search terms you want your ad to show up for, and you can define geography, you can set time of day, you can set your budget, so it's completely configurable so that you're only driving the traffic, you're only paying for the traffic that you want to get. Um, we regularly see, so if, if we're working with a local taxi company, for instance, we'll be doing research and we'll see a taxi company from Florida show up in, in our AdWords. Well, their AdWords manager is doing a very poor job because they're paying for clicks for a, for a, a dispatch that's never going to dispatch their taxi 3,000 miles to Belling. So uh, when you do AdWords, uh, out of the box, it's very broad based. I call it shotgun approach. Uh, so uh, it does take some time and energy to get it done right. But when it's done right, you can get very specific, very targeted visitors to your website and know that they are looking for exactly the products and services that you're offering. So, so I love AdWords. Uh, it's great, great product. Uh, uh, as part of SEO, keywords and search phrases are important. Those apply both to your organic SEO and your AdWords. You have to know how people look for your business. We had a client in today, we were chatting about um, he does log home restoration primarily. He's going to add log home construction to his services, so he's going to start building more log homes, and he does this in, in about five different states. So, you know, he had me Google log home contractors. I'm like, that's great, and he showed me who ranks locally, and I said, okay, great. Uh, and I posed to him that probably most people don't search for log home contractors. So while we may want to optimize the site for log home contractors, it may not be the best search term to get the most visitors to his website. So for, what else do you think? If you, were, if you wanted someone to build a log home for you, what would you search for? Just log homes. Best log home builder. Okay, anything else? Washington. You're in construction. Just yeah, but what, what specific search term would you exactly type if you were looking for someone to, to do a logo for you? Okay, so 
and you, you probably have log them in there somewhere as well, knowing that you want to log them. Okay, so a lot of business owners come in and they think the search terms are um, what they think, how they think about their business is different than how the consumer who's searching for their products and services thinks about their business. So in the case of uh, this guy, he kept saying log home, con log home contractor. Well, log home contractor gets about 130 searches a month nationwide uh, based on our tools. And, 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 and the caveat there is we don't get super accurate data because the, the Google and the companies that we provide this data don't necessarily give us the exact numbers. But log home builders, 1,300. So about 14 times more traffic for log home builders than any other log home search term that you might think would be used to find someone to build a log home for you. Uh, uh, same applies for um, engineers, or I, I find it worst. You know, they give me these uh, very complex search terms, and I ask, well, how would your client search for that? And, and it turns out to be something totally different. But, but the point here is understanding how people search for your business may not be as a business owner or an expert in your field may not be how you would search for your business. So keyword research is a very important part of identifying how people search for you. And then you want to optimize your site or pay for your AdWords that are relevant to those search terms. Okay. Um, I won't spend too much time on this. We'll look at the slide, but <clears throat> important SEO elements, um, content important, uh, how your images are optimized. A lot of other variables associated with how your website performs, how fast it loads, whether it's secure or not. Google's almost mandating that your website has an SSL certificate on it now. Uh, most companies uh, like ours are just providing that for free. Um, uh, having links, uh, how your metadata, which is kind of the back end of your website, is configured. Um, and then make sure, I guess I have XML slide now. Uh, and then having a meeting, you know, complying with Google and, and being with Webmaster Guide. Uh, Google's very sensitive about trying to game the system, and so they're smarter than most of us SEO types, so they'll always, uh, whenever we find something that we think trick the system into ranking better, if Google doesn't like it, they'll do an update and, uh, and, and solve that problem in a hurry. Uh, just uh, fun fact, Google changes their algorithm over a thousand times a year. Uh, so they're always tweaking the search performance uh, and how their algorithm ranks websites. Um, analytics, who has a website here? Who has analytics installed? Maybe a better question, who doesn't have analytics installed? Okay. So analytics basically shows you all the information about all the visitors to your website. As much as Google knows. When we talk about social media, we'll talk about the Facebook pixel where that gives you an entirely different type of data on your visitor because we all share everything about our lives on Facebook, right? So Facebook knows everything about us. Down to, uh, they take companies to analyze what they think our income is. Uh, they know our marital status, our gender. They know if we like the Seahawks or the Sounders. Uh, so uh, analytics is a little bit more anonymous. It's a little bit more data about time on site, what pages people visit, how they flow through the site, what their browser they're using, what device they're using, what their screen resolution is what country or city they come from. So all of that really great technical data, but it doesn't, there's not a lot of information there about uh, demographic information, gender, uh, marital status, you know, all the religion, all those things that, that we tend to put in Facebook relatively freely. Um, so we talked about SEO, talked about PPC, those are the two big ones. Those are search-based marketing, meaning people are, that are going to the web, they're looking for something. Uh, they find you in Google and Bing using those, uh, you know, and so if you have good SEO and you have good PPC, that's going to help you get more people to your website. Uh, Facebook, uh, I always kind of joke that that's kind of like the candy bar at the checkout aisle. Uh, lots of ads in Facebook. You're not necessarily going to Facebook to look for a plumber or a contractor or a kitchen remodel. Uh, Facebook would like you to, but that's not really exactly what happens. So. Uh, Facebook advertising is an entirely different animal, and so we'll talk a little bit about that as well in more detail. Uh, a big part of being online now is what your reputation looks like. So there's a whole other area called reputation management. Um, that is basically your online reviews and what people think about you and how you manage that. Uh, obviously, the more five-star reviews you have, the better conversions you're going to get because people are going to see that you're a good business and take care of your customers. 
uh, you've got a, if you have four ratings, then uh, people may just pass you by when they see a two star, uh, even if you show up in the map pack. So we'll look at that as well. All right, we'll do Q and A in the end here. Uh, okay, so let's look at some. Uh, see if I can get my browser up here. So I kind of rattled through that pretty quick. Um, so let's let me close down PowerPoint. Okay, so let's. Talk a little bit more about our services, 
Um, and if we scroll down a little bit, you can see uh, we got we have links that link back to uh, the different areas of service. So when we land people on these pages, we can track that. And then once they click off and start looking at other services, they'll never get back to the server page. Uh, they, unless they unless they back in their browser, but there's no link to it. And that's fine. I only want to get them there, and then I want to get them onto the main content of the website, and hopefully they'll uh, reach out and get contact with us. But this page is specifically optimized to rank for Ferndale services, Ferndale, Washington. And you can see from the content and how the uh, you know the, the page is, is tuned up. And I'll show you a page title. Uh, is that? Sorry, I have to go. So if you mouse over the tab, that's called a page title. That is in your code. Uh, no one sees that unless they mouse over that tab or they bookmark that. But that is probably the number one SEO element. Uh, on a lot of websites, if you're poorly optimized, I can change that and it'll change your ranking within a day. So it won't necessarily bring you to the top, but it'll bring you up. Um, from what it is. So if your page title says home, you're doing it wrong. Because it's about 10 million page titles or more out there say home because that's the default for most websites. But uh, so you want to make sure all your page titles are good. Um, but this is an example of local SEO, but a nice example of um, how to optimize one specific page. So all right. Any SEO questions at this point? Yeah, great. So what in the world? Oh, just creating nice links between pages. So, so on the, you saw on the Ferndale page, I internally linked to my different service areas. I've got a little bolted list. That's internal link. So, okay, so just refer pages back. When, when it's relevant, yeah. And don't overdo it. And don't create a footer with 10,000 menu links in it. Google hates that. You, you actually get penalized for it. So, um, you know, Google's done a much better job of, of trying to, of human emulation. So, you know, they don't want to see a lot of garbage in SEO tactics as much, but there's still great tactics that you have to employ. Internal linking is one that you can do, and you can do it right, and you can do it very wrong. And if you do it very wrong, it will hurt your ability to rank well at Google. Uh, but, but we tend to link it out uh, through, our, through, through the content of our pages. So if we look at ClickMonster a little bit more, you know, we talk about our, our page title here. You know, I kind of have my, my most important stuff in there. Web design, SEO, digital marketing. Click Monster Bellingham. Um, some companies want to put their brand first. Uh, we know Google weights the words in front of that, the most important. And they truncate that at, say, roughly 70 characters, which means anything after 70 characters, they don't really look at. So you, you want to keep your page title to the proper rank um, in order to get the most effectiveness out of it. Uh, you can see in my content, I use my I use my search terms that I want to rank for, digital marketing, web design, I use them throughout the content. If you use them too much, you will get penalized because Google will view that as keyword stuffing. So if you're in Bellingham Real Estate, I, I can pick out on a, a realtor, uh, I won't, but they, they used to use, it, it, 10 years ago you could type Bellingham Real Estate 400 times in your content and that would help you rank better. Now Google says, uh, they look at your keyword re keyword frequency and they will penalize you for overusing a particular search term or search phrase. So you want to balance it out, uh, make it readable to humans. You're not building your website solely to rank, but uh, there's a fine balance there between getting a nice amount of search term frequency versus overdoing it. Uh, so, So SEO is pretty complicated. There's a lot of elements to it. Uh, most of the, the work you want to do is going to be on your website with great content and making sure all your SEO, SEO elements are done correctly. Um, other factors are link building or the amount of people that interpret that externally link to you. So that the more people that link to you from other websites creates more credibility for your website and therefore Google's going to rank you higher for it. Again, there's a caveat to that, if you have crappy links, then Google is going to penalize you. Uh, that's another thing that changed probably five years ago. We used to do link building and we used to build a lot of crappy links. And then Google changed their algorithm to penalize you for crappy links. So then we had to try and undo, undo all those crappy links because some of our clients' websites were ranking number one and they tanked. And 
uh, Google was kind enough to create a disavow tool for a disavow tool for us that we could create a list of these crappy links and tell Google to ignore them because once you create them, it's very hard to undo them from these websites that you have no control over. Uh, <laughs> yeah, let's get there. So uh, let's see. Let's see what uh, let's see what crappy analogy I have to talk about. Crappy <laughs> so uh, so if you are a high schooler, you know you got your different clubs, right? So uh, so if you're hanging out with the football team, you know that's the, the, the big popular club, so that's a good link. But if you're you know in the chess club, that may not be as popular, so you might you don't get as much link juice from that club. Like the Wall Street Journal would be a much better link to your website than the Bellingham Herald, uh, because the Wall Street Journal has much more credibility online. They get much more traffic. Uh, they're just a more popular, uh, more widely known site. So uh, links from a directory. Uh, Chamber, a little, of Chamber of Commerce. Chamber of Commerce. That's a great. Okay. Yeah. So uh, a lot of a lot of a lot of chamber websites though will put a tag on their link. So I may be, I may go to the Ferndale website. And you may have a link to my website, but you may put a no-follow tag on it, basically telling Google not to give me any credit for it. So uh, that's not as used as much anymore. But uh, by what used to happen is if you used to link to a lot of other websites, they would they would take away from your what I call it link juice, your link power, because you're giving it away to these other websites. So you mostly want more links coming in, and we don't recommend you have, a, especially if you're a business. And I don't have a link on my. I don't have links on my. I don't have a, a page on my website that says resources and the links to 50,000 walking county businesses. It just doesn't matter. No one's going to use it. So uh, it doesn't benefit my website. It doesn't really benefit those other websites. So I, I do see that a lot. You know, small businesses want to link out to all sorts of local resources, but they're a plumber and they're not linking to any plumbing resources. So you know, it, it doesn't make sense anymore. But but the people the, the people that link to you, you need to be aware of and. Obviously, if you have better quality links, that's going to help your ability to rank in Google. So, so you've got your, we call that kind of an off-site element. So you have your on-site elements, which is all the elements that make up your website and make it perform well in Google, and that's content and code and, and internal linking. And then you have external linking. There's also factors that help you rank, which are social media indicators. Um, Google likes to see that you have a Facebook page, maybe a Twitter account, maybe Instagram. Um, they put more credibility on a business website when they see that you're out there in more places. So it's harder for a company like ours to get a brand new business ranked because they don't have all those inbound links from being on the web for 10 years. They don't have the city search. They don't have the yellow pages. They don't have the Yelp. They don't have the Facebook necessarily. They don't have the Twitter, the Instagram, the Pinterest. Uh, the more of those uh, external sources, whether it be social media or Directory list, or excuse me, uh, we call it NAP, name, address, phone number, business listing. Uh, the more credibility Google uh, gives your site, and the easier it is for you to rank. Uh, if you go register a new domain, start a new business right away, it's going to be hard for you to rank for any search term. It can be done. It just takes takes a little bit more time, a little bit more effort to get to get it done. A um, couple other aspects to SEO before we move on: uh, web hosting. You know, we own our own web hosting company. Why? Because it gives us a lot more control over SEO. Uh, I'll pick on GoDaddy. I don't love them. I have no love for them at all. Their websites load slowly, and they're cheap. Uh, they're cheap because they put 10,000 websites on a server. And so you're not going to get the resources you need for your website to perform correctly. Uh, they still charge for SSL certificates. Google has pretty much mandated that your site be secure, uh, and part of their algorithm will penalize you for not doing that. Does anyone does everyone understand what I mean? Site secure in SSL. So you see on mine, see how I have a secure green. So that means my site's loading encrypted. Uh, so Google big data protection, data privacy advocate. So they want every website to load secure. So who's got a website out there that they don't know if it's secure or not? No idea. Well, and what's your domain? Uh, www. Tmmon. So those pretty slow. That hurts you. Uh, so it took a couple seconds before your site even rendered. Yeah. Um, yeah. Don't love them either. Uh, or Bluehost. Uh, I'm gonna get a bunch of hate mail from this video when it gets online with that. Um, so yeah, not secure. Now Google is threatening that 
with future updates of Chrome, although they threatened this last year and they didn't do it, that they're going to start making it more, making users more aware that your site's not secure. When they do that, just think of how many people are going to abandon your website. When you Google starts popping up a warning that says this site, this site is not secure, it's probably going to look like your site has malware or it's been hacked, and so you will probably start losing visitors instantly when they see that notification. I have seen it on occasion when they maybe have been testing it, but for now they just leave you with that little uh, little black eye. And uh, I've seen variations of that where it says not secure in red, uh, but you don't want any sort of deterrent and energy to get people to your website. The last thing you want is to deter them by not having your website be secure, which is such a small fix in most cases. You know, I think uh, GoDaddy charges the people that do charge us self certificates is 80, 90, 100 bucks a year. Um, a lot of hosting companies like that just, just include it for free, uh, and we're one of those companies as well. Um, so, uh, what is her page title on this page? Never had a child. Huh? Is it the top never? The page title, we, I don't even have to mouse over it because it's not long enough. I can still see it without mousing over the top of it. Oh, is it about? It's about. <laughs> that tells us nothing about this page, right? <laughs> All right, I joke about home. This is almost as bad as home. Okay. All right, it's, it's about how the home page of this website, and it's about about what. So, given that that's the most important SEO element on your page, it should say um, Montessori School, Pioneer Meadows, or are you in Ferndale? Yeah. Ferndale, Washington. I might even go Ferndale, Bellingham, because yeah. a lot of people are going to search for Bellingham Montessori School. And you want to pick up the major, the major metro. Well, Bellingham major metro, at least for the county, it's our major population center. So you want to cheat a little bit and, and get a little Bellingham keyword stuff in the, the page title. That's going to help you show up in, in more Bellingham searches. Uh, you can retune your content. Um, are, are you guys bored with SEO yet? Because we've already spent 35 minutes on it. Yeah, good part. Uh, I'll try. I'll try and move on to the other stuff in a second. But uh, so, do you mind if I uh, give you go through your site a little bit? Not at all. Okay. So, so we know it's about. Ooh, it doesn't really say anything. Definitely not giving you any help in search engines there. So I like to do a little control F in any browser pulls up search box, right? So let's go Ferndale. So she uses Ferndale three times. That's okay. Bellingham. No, good. She's got Bellingham in there once. I was going to say, how would you how would you get Bellingham into your content if you're a Ferndale school? Uh, something as simple as uh, we we have. Uh, Students, we service students from uh, Beth, Ferndale, Bellingham, Lyndon, and Blaine, as well as the rest of Walker County. You know, something like that. So you you can have a nice bit of content in there. Uh, I'd run, I'd make Natalie review it and tune it up and make it user friendly. But but my point is, you can get some geographic search terms in there, even though you're not in that particular community. Uh, so uh, the other thing I'd look at, which you think would be uh, self-explanatory, explanatory, Montessori. So 14 instances of Montessori, uh, that's probably pretty good. Uh, I, I might argue that that's too many times uh, based on the amount of content you have. So um, we have tools that run uh, keyword frequency analysis. So, you know, you want it to be, you know, probably low 10%, low, low double digits. So if your keyword frequency for a search term you're trying to rank for is 30 or 40%, you're using the search term too much in your content. Okay. Uh, yeah, you're, you know, your page titles are a little weird because I clicked the gallery link. Did I not? Is that not the Gallery, yeah. Wait, I took gallery and I ended up on the about Montessori page. Is that right? About Montessori. Oh, you're about Montessori. I'm sorry. You're about Montessori. So your home page says about, your about page says gallery. Do you have a gallery on the website? Yeah. Okay. So, so you have some, some issues there. You know, um, definitely, you know, some low hanging fruit that you can fix relatively easily and probably give you a nice boost in your ranking. Although, there's probably not a lot of Montessori schools in Ferndale. When I just searched this on the top of my phone, we were the top of the map. 
Yeah, and that's, that's because how many other monastery schools are in Yeah, There's four or five that have names in this, yeah. in this general area. Yeah, so, so you, you know, naturally, because you're out there and you've been around for a little while? Uh, so 2007. Yeah, okay. So, you know, you, you get a lot of uh, credibility, if you will, for longevity, and you're in a smaller community and there's not a lot of competition. So, but that doesn't mean you can't fix these things because it's confusing from a user standpoint, and ultimately you want to make the website very user friendly. And you don't want, you know, your competition hiring an SEO person to be and finding that it's pretty easy to knock you off the top because you do have some technical errors with your SEO. So, um, okay, I think I'm going to move on off SEO. We're going to talk about social media and paper clicks. Uh, any, any final fleeting questions or thoughts about search engine optimization? Nothing? Come on. Um, what are your, do you have any uh, opinion on outsourcing the listing strategy of Yak still there? Yeah, uh, not a fan of Yak because I tested it for a year. It was super expensive and I it provided no benefit to uh, the 100 clients that we set up with. Uh, and I wanted a lot of money. So uh, I it, it didn't love it at all. Yes, there are some other companies out there that I think do a much better job, but really your, your main listings that you care about are uh, Google, Bing, uh, Yahoo is now associated with Yak, so I wouldn't worry about them. But uh, you know, Foursquare. Yeah, Foursquare is a Foursquare is a data aggregator. There's four major data aggregators. Uh, we like Moz, Moz Local. Um, uh, you know, and then and Yelp. So, so if you're going to do it manually, definitely hate it. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it does. Uh, you know, but the Moz Local is a nice one. It's not too expensive, uh, and we use that in combination with some other tools. Um, but Make sure if you have a business, make sure you claim your Google My Business listing. Do you own? Do you claim? Do you claim yours? Mm -hmm. All right, let's check out. Uh, let's see, we got Tiny Your Metal Metal Story. Let's try that. Okay. Too much other stuff there. Here is the Google My Business list that I'm talking about on the right. It appears to have been claimed. Now the question is if you claimed it or not. You want to claim that listing because you can make a lot of changes to your business listing on the back end. Change your hours, you can add photos, you can actually put a little snippet of uh, like a little blog post type of thing, publish it to it if you want. Uh, you can set your you can set holiday hours, uh, you can change your address, phone number, you can change your categorization, although you look like your categorization is pretty good. What if you're if it's not claimed, it'll say something, are you the business owner? And it'll have a little bit of text there that you can tell that it hasn't been claimed yet. And if, if, if it's your business and it hasn't been claimed, click that link and they'll either verify with a phone call or they'll mail you a postcard. Once you get the postcard or mail or phone call, they'll give you a, a code, you'll punch it in, and then you'll own the listing under whatever email account you're logged in at. Usually it's a Gmail account or, or your Google, uh, your G Suite account that's associated with your business domain name. Um, very important for local. Uh, that's the first thing we do. It also gives you the ability to respond to reviews. So if someone leaves you a bad review, if you don't have your business listing claimed, you can't put a response on it and say, you know, give your side of the story. Uh, although we'll talk, maybe we'll talk about the reputation management. But uh, okay, so we're done with SEO. What do you want to talk about? Social media next, or pay per click, or reputation? Social media, raise your hand. Pay per click. All right, reputation management. All right, looks like social media it is. Uh, so social media, totally different type of marketing. Uh, obviously, well, raise your hand if you don't have a business page, a business Facebook page. All right, okay. So only one of you who has, and you have a business, right? So only one of you who has a business doesn't have a Facebook page. I'm not a huge, fanatic about social media advertising, uh, or at least, not, or at least the, the posting side of it. But if you have a Facebook page, you need to put up good, relevant content that engages people. Um, and it's more of a branding thing, in my opinion, at least just having the page. And so while I post periodically on Facebook, and I think it does uh, provide value, um, 
it's not quite as, for most businesses, it's not quite as direct as coming up and search. Uh, and I'll kind of give you an example of what we're posting. <coughs> So obviously having a nice, well-presented page is important. Have, you, have a nice banner, make sure your logo is clean. Um, you know, here we've got a couple of our best in Northwest stuff. We like to promote that we're a Google partner. Um, and if we get down here, you know, we're gonna look through a little bit of our um, internet. So, um, so I post stupid stuff and I post stuff that's relevant to uh, business. So uh, I posted that we're doing the power hour and uh, Ezra said he was coming, but that was him here, so if anyone knows Ezra from plain English, <laughs> give him a hard time. Give him my laptop. Uh, what's that? Give him my laptop. So let's see, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, Ezra. So I can put an act on his name, so we'll know Ezra. Uh, we are all looking at this. Alright, so. So Ezra knows now that, uh, that, that he's, we know he's not here. So uh, he's going to be here. So you can use social media to post events and create events. Uh, you're going to get reviews on your Facebook page, although you don't have to enable reviews when you set it up. But once you enable it, you can't take them away. Uh, at least that's how it used to be. I've checked on that lately. Uh, sometimes I'll post, we own a bunch of local domain names. So you know, I'd like to move some of those, so I'll post something about, uh, occasionally I'll post a link to something on our website. I threw a page, I wanted to make people aware of it. Um, we'll post, uh, we do site of the week, although not as much, sometimes a stupid meme. Uh, but, you know, I don't get a ton of interaction on some of this stuff. I, th I, I laugh because I think the most interaction I got was years ago when uh, someone brought their dog in and had the cone because it's him from the vet, so we took a video of it. And, you know, nothing to do with SEO, but. Uh, but great interaction. So social media is more warm and fuzzy, and I, and I like that aspect of it because, you know, people see the personalities behind the business if you post about that kind of stuff. People see that the dogs are in the office and they're like that. So it's good. You know, they, they kind of get the sense that we're real people. Uh, we have lives outside of work. Uh, but I also like to post information about SEO and other things. How much that's absorbed, I don't, I don't know. Uh, but you can get lots of data here. So, and the same applies to Instagram. Um, uh, social media is great for uh, more retail type of businesses, restaurants, uh, you know, business to consumer stuff. I think it works a little better than B2B. Uh, uh, Instagram is great if you have very visual products and you want to uh, promote those so people can see them. Uh, then, of course, you can have Pinterest. Uh, demographically, it's, I think it's 85%, 90% women. So if your target audience is more women, then Pinterest is great. You can advertise on LinkedIn, which would be more. Uh, uh, business to professional or B2B or, you know, uh, you know, dealing with more interaction with business owners or professionals that are on LinkedIn. Uh, what else am I missing, Ellie? No, oh, Twitter. Don't love Twitter at all, but uh, uh, a lot of people use it. So, you know, we have a social media manager that just runs that. He's very good at helping businesses identify how you use your social media more effectively. But ultimately, you know, I would say every business should have a Facebook page at a minimum. What I do like about Facebook is actually Facebook's advertising. So we're, we're paying on much more like a Google AdWords model. Now earlier I talked about how Google Analytics gets you all this data from every visit to your website, but it's not specific to the user. Uh, now we know that raise your hand, everyone, raise your hand if you don't have a Facebook camera. Yeah, raise your hand if you don't really use it very often. Okay. I, I probably I use it on more for the business, not so much on the personal level. But uh, so if you have so so I'll give you an example of a client that we use basic advertising on that's been very effective. So he sells a product that's a British product, and it's primarily around Christmas. It's called the Christmas Cracker. Does anyone know what that is? Okay, it's a tube. You pop it. It's got a paper hat in there. It's got a little motto. Uh, it pops a little bit like a firecracker. Uh, very popular in Britain, sells a ton of these things in the Christmas season. But he also made a wedding, he also has a wedding cracker. Well, no one knows what a wedding cracker is, they think it's food. Okay, so, so, how did, so he happens to rank number one in the world if you Google wedding cracker. But that's, that's only great because if people know what a wedding cracker is and they're seeking to get a wedding cracker. Well, Facebook gives you the opportunity to present your product to people who don't know what it is. 
And you can do that with a video, you can do that with a bunch of different images. Um, so in his case, what we do when his Christmas season's over and spring's coming around, we're starting to see more weddings, we target, who do we target in Facebook? What are you targeting? Young women. Young women? Not necessarily young. Right. All women. So what would there, so how would we, like, how would we, what, what would be the status of Facebook that we would look to target? Engaged. Engaged women. That's who we target. Just engaged women. Because they're going to make the buying decision on whether they want this Christmas cracker, this wedding cracker at their reception or not. Okay? Because that's what they're going to buy for, the reception of their wedding. I don't want to spend money targeting a single guy for a wedding cracker. I don't want to spend money targeting my 16-year-old son for a wedding cracker. So while young women is good, we tend to set a range on there from maybe, you know, 22 to, you know, 50 or whatever it may be. Um, so Facebook gives you the ability to target very, a very narrow demographic. You can target just people that like the Sounders games, the, the Seattle Sounders, or the, uh, the Seahawks. So say you're selling Seahawks uh, merchandise. Well, you can target just people that like the Seahawks games. And so they're the only ones that are going to see your ad. Uh, I run, for our ads, we run uh, only targeting what Facebook identifies as business on. And one of the parameters they use for that is, do you, are you an admin on a business page? So, because that's typically a good indicator that they have some decision-making authority in that business. We also target job titles. I target, uh, I target owner. I target small business owner. I target CEO. I target CMO. I target uh, marketing people. So I target maybe 200 different job titles uh, that I only want to see my ad because those are the people that I want to engage with to sell my services to. So. From Facebook advertising standpoint, you're, it's not so much search-based, you're targeting a display ad to people that fit your demographic profile, generally. And you can narrow that with geography, basically any other parameter. So with Facebook, they have, where Google Analytics, we install a little bit of Google Analytics code on the website. With Facebook, we install what's called the Facebook Pixel. Even if you're not advertising on Facebook, we're recommending all our clients install the Pixel because then you can look at the demographic information of all the people that visit your website. So you can know their gender, you can know age, you know, all, everything that Facebook will tell you about. Uh, because to Facebook, you're just a product uh, that they're selling to advertisers like me to run ads on. So everything you put Facebook, Facebook uses to sell to advertisers to market. So be aware of that when you're playing with Facebook. And how many of you ever log out of Facebook? Yeah, not, if it's on your phone, probably never. Uh, so anything you do on your Facebook and visit a website that's got a Facebook pixel on it, records it. So from a business standpoint, that's great. From a privacy standpoint, I'm not such a big fan of that. But that's the way it is, so uh, be aware. So with Facebook, you have a lot of flexibility to target, like I said, demographically, uh, where SEO and, and AdWords are targeting more based on search. So search-based search advertising versus uh, display and Facebook and social media. Um, Everyone has paid platforms now. You can advertise on Pinterest, you can advertise on Twitter, you can pay to advertise in LinkedIn. Uh, Facebook obviously is the biggest and we think it's the most effective, but for certain businesses and certain niches, you know, you can certainly look at some of those other platforms to advertise. What's the difference between ad and boosting a post? Boosting a post is very similar. Uh, you can set, uh, uh, you're not creating a specific ad for whatever campaign you're going for. Uh, you have some dem demographic targeting. It's not quite as in depth, okay. so you can actually you can actually uh, define your audience and your boost. I love boost the posts. I mean, I boost the posts. I'm trying to figure out what is the difference between the ad and the ad. Yeah, the ad is, is going to be more ongoing. The boost says, oh, you're going to visit for five days, and you're going to spend twenty dollars, and we're going to estimate that you're going to get you know three thousand to five thousand exposures. Yeah, I, I think boosted posts are great. Uh, okay. You know, it's part of our social media services that, you know, we will do a boosted post, you know, a weekly or monthly. Um, it's a good way to get your uh, your message out. Um, you know, maybe I boost my domain name post because I want to I want to sell some of these domain names we own. And so the more people can see it, the more likely I am I'm going to get uh, someone who's interested in something that we own. Uh, would I boost that? No. It's funny. It's not going to do me any good. Uh, you know, we, we, for, we do a lot of, uh, whenever we launch a new website, not whenever, but for a while there, uh, whenever we launch a website, we, we, uh, we put a Facebook post on, we 
we put it in our blog or our portfolio, we create a Facebook post, we create an Instagram post, I think we did Reddit, uh, and then we put it on LinkedIn. And I, you know, we need, we have to get back to doing that. It creates, uh, I think, it creates brand recognition. You know, using your social media effectively uh, helps people see Click Monster, Click Monster. They see the output of our work. Uh, assuming our quality is good, you know, then then that, you know, I, you know, I think we picked up uh, some nice clients from that. Uh, but you know, with social media and blogging, it's kind of one of those things where you almost have to schedule. You know, and I did have it on my schedule every Wednesday at three. I'm going to do my slide of the week. Uh, but I'm going to make Natalie start doing that. Uh, I, you know, I, it's uh, you know, it's, it's, it's repetition. You just got to stay involved and know that you're going to post uh, some, somewhat systematically if you're going to use your Facebook and have it be effective. All right. So, any social media questions? Do you know um, does Facebook only allow you to have one pixel um, per site? Yeah, I don't know the answer to that. I think so because I think it's just a couple of different social media accounts. And why would you need to? I'm sorry. Why would you want to? Or need to? Oh, oh, uh, oh, yes. Um, yeah, we had to up our limit, so we had to call. We had to send an email. Uh, ten, so we can do two hundred now, I think. But uh, I think I think the initial limit is ten. I think you have to create a separate. I'm not the social media. Uh, I know I know enough about social media to be dangerous, but as far as some of the technical details, uh, we got to get to Joshua. He he can answer those questions. But but ultimately, I think you have to create a separate advertising account for each one mm -hmm. and your initial account gives you I think it was five or ten but since we're managing a bunch of clients we need more but it's, it's just a matter of sending a support ticket and within six hours they up to some absurd amount so um, but yeah so I know we have probably 70 or 80 pixels in our account uh, for different clients right now so and, and a lot of them aren't even advertising they're not uh, uh, they're maybe do some posts which is nice but uh, if they're, but they're gathering that data just like analytics. So if they want to do something down the road, they'll have a little bit better insight into uh, who they're going to target and what they're going to do. Um, paper click. We've got five minutes for paper click. Or do you want to talk about reputation? Paper click. All right. I like. I love paper click. People hate spending money on it, but I love it because I'm an ROI guy. Uh, if it generates a positive ROI, it's great. Do it all day long. Uh, I don't spend a ton on paper click. Probably five hundred dollars a month, but. Uh, I get I get clients from it. It gives me top of the line exposure on the search results. Um, uh, get that back up there. Uh, so let's see, Ferndale, Ferndale Plumber. Let's see if anyone's run an ad. Uh, uh, yeah, Laverne and uh, Eagle Plumbing and Heating. So, okay, so we won't, we won't put their ads. Um, so Google's getting more into the uh, home advisor type stuff too. So Google, they want to take over everything. They don't even want you to visit the website. So you don't see carousels at restaurants. You'll see uh, flights before you even get to the airline website. So. What's that? Yeah. Okay. Yep. This one, Michigan. No, the three at the top of yeah, we get that a lot. Detroit, Royal, Edward. okay, yeah. sure. Uh, so, a little trick in Chrome. Let's see here. Let's make sure. Chrome. Chrome thinks I'm in Puget, Bellingham, Washington. So, let's, uh, so Chrome doesn't know my location up here, so it must allow us to know. <coughs> and this is, uh, it, it's normally pretty accurate, uh, but. Depending on where your internet connection comes from, <coughs> you, you may not get your actual city. So some, when I was in a, when I was using my phone in Europe this summer, it kept saying I was in Texas, but I was in Lithuania. I'm like, oh, okay, well, that's not really effective. So, uh, but you know, generally it does a pretty good job. But uh, obviously, it misses the boat on some of these. But a, a lot of times, what I'll see is the AdWords ad will be from some other some other region. So we we actually email those people and say, hey, we'll help you out for free here because your ad's showing here in Wisconsin and. You're your plumbing has shown up in, uh, in Bellingham, probably not a good use of your advertising dollars. So, uh, especially because AdWords, you can really geographically restrict what city you want to be in. You can do it by zip code, you can do it by radius around an address. Uh, anything you want, you can really control how your ad displays. Um, so, um, so again, we know AdWords uh, cost money as a cost per click method. We know it's completely customizable as far as triggering what search terms uh, your ad shows up for. Um, 
Let's do this one. I think I log home filters. So a big part of AdWords that people make a mistake is um, um, so AdWords out in the box is designed to make Google money. They make billions of dollars a quarter off their AdWords <coughs> uh, Companies like Amazon spend millions of dollars a day just on, on ads. So small businesses sometimes think they can't compete, but it's even better than small businesses because most times small businesses are competing against large national companies. So that means you can bid more per click then they are willing to because they may be targeting all 50 states. So if you're if you're a mortgage broker here, well you're not going to be targeting other states because you're not licensed in other states. You're probably not going to be targeting Seattle because you know it's less likely someone in Seattle is going to use <coughs> someone in Birdville or Bellingham to get a mortgage. So you're going to target mostly Walker County. So the search volume of the population of Walker County is relatively small compared to Seattle. So you're getting a lot less people clicking your ad. What does that mean? It's less cost to you. So you could bid 10 or 15 dollars a click. But a company like LendingTree, is there's no way they're going to do that. So it's easy for a local small uh, small business, and small can mean you know tens of millions of dollars a year sale. But you know a, a business that's operating more locally to do very well on AdWords because they're not having to spend their budget on other markets, and, and the big companies don't do that. 